welcome back to the channel, Nurse Midwife Bay. My name is Aisha and I'm a certified nurse midwife. This channel is intended to be your one-stop shop for all things women's health. My goal is to empower women to make informed decisions on their health. Today's topic is bacterial vaginosis. Before we get into it, you guys know what to do. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and don't forget to hit the notification bell because it really does help my channel. You'll get a notification every single time that I upload. And if you are already part of the notif notification gang, then do me a favor, leave that hashtag notification gang in the comments. All right guys, if you're interested in learning more about bacterial vaginosis, then please keep watching. All right guys, so I really wanted to talk about this topic bacteria vaginosis because it's something I see um, on a day-to-day -day basis like I can say about every day I come across a case of bacteria vaginosis it's that common so what is it bacteria vaginosis or BV is just an imbalance of good bacteria versus bad bacteria in the vagina you always want to have a balance of good bacteria to bad bacteria in your body. The bacteria that's good should always be winning. And that's how you maintain health, having enough good bacteria to keep bad bacteria at bay. Now, so bacteria vaginosis is not an STD or anything like that. I make sure to stress that to my patients. It's not anything you can pass to your male partners. So it's an infection that only women can get inside the vagina. Um, and a lot of things can actually throw off your pH balance. Believe it or not, um, the simplest of things that we use every day can actually throw off a woman's pH balance. So soap is the number one culprit. It is the number one reason that women get bacteria vaginosis. So women, we were taught by our mothers and our grandmothers and our great grandmothers that we have to keep the vagina fresh and clean. And in order to do that, we have to be using soap. I'm gonna debunk that myth right now, sis, because they told us wrong, y'all. They've been telling us wrong for years. And this next part is probably gonna have some of y'all clicking out this video because you just can't stand to hear it, but I'm gonna give it to you real because it's the truth. The vagina is designed to cleanse itself. And what that means is it doesn't need any soap to help it out. It was designed to stay pH balanced and to sm stay smelling good uh, and to stay infection free. Now, when you start introducing all these soaps, I don't care what it is because my patients are always like, well, what about Dove? Or, oh no, I don't use soap, I just use Summer's Eve. And my response to them is like, I don't care what type of soap it is. I don't even care if it's the most gentle soap or if it's catered towards women's feminine hygiene because you have to think about it. When you go down that aisle with all those things catered towards our feminine hygiene, you have to know that the bottom line is for these companies to make money, right? So it'll say stuff like pH balance or it'll say stuff like refresh. Um, but the, the reality is, is that your body is smart and it's designed to cleanse itself and maintain its own pH balance if you leave it alone. So again, a lot of times I'll get patients who say, well, what about Dove, Vagisil, Summer's Eve, Black Soap, all of those things. So what I tell my patients is that soap is designed to kill bacteria, right? So we wash our hands with soap um, usually every day because we want to get rid of germs, right? Now, you have to understand that if you're using soap inside the vagina, it's doing the same thing. It's getting rid of bacteria, whether that bacteria is good bacteria or bad bacteria. Soap can't distinguish the difference. It just comes in and it sterilizes everything. So essentially, women who are taking, you know, who um, take baths or showers usually every day, every other day, if you're using soap, you're essentially sterilizing your vagina that often and so when you are getting rid of that good bacteria on a regular basis you allow for an overgrowth of the bad bacteria and therein lies the imbalance so that is the most common reason women get bacteria vaginosis is through the use of soap also if you use like bath bombs or bubble bath those things can easily throw off your pH balance I'm surprised sometimes that they are still even being sold and that there are as many women who buy these things um, some some women have stronger uh, vaginal flora than others so they don't get thrown into BV as quickly as others or some women can have bacteria vaginosis and not know that they have it so they continue to use soap and things like that um, not knowing they actually have the infection again like i said soap bath bombs and, and baths with body wash and all those things or um 
bubble bath can cause bacteria vaginosis so can sex toys so if you're a person who uses sex toys but you don't clean them off in between sessions the bacteria that you that was on the toy the first time around if left unclean can regrow and then if you use it again then that can throw off your ph so make sure if you're using sex toys of any kind that you're washing them between uses and i recommend you just wash them with peroxide or alcohol another way that women get bacteria vaginosis is through toilet paper now some people um, buy scented toilet paper or some people use like those wet wipes that, are, that have fragrance. Anytime you have something that has fragrance in it, you want to be very, very careful um, because that can easily throw off your pH balance. I understand that we are always trying to maintain a certain level of freshness down there, but you're doing yourself a disservice if you're putting all these perfumes and dyes and chemicals inside the vagina. I promise you, in the long run, you're not doing better. You're not winning. I promise you. Another common way that women get bacteria vaginosis is actually if you are a woman who has sex with other women. So now, you cannot pass bacteria vaginosis to a male. A male does not have a vagina. Um, so you can be, you can have the infection, you can have unprotected sex with your partner and it will not affect your male partner. But if you have sex with a female who has bacteria vaginosis, then certainly she can pass bacteria vaginosis to you. So yeah guys, those are the common ways that women get bacteria vaginosis. So now let's get into the symptoms of bacteria vaginosis. The cardinal symptoms of bacteria vaginosis is going to be a fishy odor. Usually any other infection, even if we're talking about STDs, do not come with a fishy odor. That's usually a trademark of bacteria vaginosis. So if you have a fishy odor, then you probably have bacteria vaginosis. The next thing is discharge. You're typically going to have a copious amount of watery gray discharge. A lot of patients will describe it as feeling like they're moist or humid and they're, like their underwear just continues to be moist and wet. And that's because bacterial vaginosis discharge is very watery. So it can feel like maybe you kind of peed on yourself a little bit um, because of the discharge is just so watery. Um, so that's another common symptom of bacterial vaginosis. Typically when we're dealing like with like a yeast infection, and we'll talk more about that in another video, that discharge is going to be more thick white. But with bacterial vaginosis, it's going to usually be really watery, gray in color, and it'll always feel like your underwear are just damp or wet. Another sign of bacteria vaginosis is just pain with sex or overall irritation. Now, in order to have bacteria vaginosis, you don't have to have all three of these symptoms. You may only have one or two, or you may have all three. You don't have to have all of them in order to have the infection. But typically, the cardinal symptom of bacteria vaginosis is a fishy odor. And so you can imagine when women start to smell this fishy odor, what do we do? They start using soap. And what does soap do? We had just talked about it. Soap gets rid of that good bacteria. So now temporarily it might get rid of that fishy odor. But what you're doing is continuing to get rid of the good bacteria. And then you're allowing even more bacteria to keep growing and you're perpetuating the infection. Does that make sense? So you see how soap is a short term fix to a bigger picture problem. So the name of the bacteria that lives in the vagina that keeps it healthy is called lactobacillus. It's this good bacteria that already naturally comes in the vagina that is designed to keep it already pH balanced and smelling fresh and good. It was already built in. God already thought about it for us, okay? So only way you can rebuild that good bacteria is with time and not using soap. So time and not using soap helps to regenerate, rebuild that good bacteria so that it can surpass the bad bacteria, keep the bad bacteria at bay, and then when you do that, then your pH is balanced and you don't deal with an odor and you're not dealing with um, discharge or irritation. Now, your vagina is automatically going to have a certain smell to it. Um, and so that is what women want to, to stay away from, but understand that there's an infectious smell versus just how a vagina is supposed to smell. But I understand, I got you, you don't want to smell at all. We'll talk about that in a minute. So if I'm being, 
So if left untreated, is there anything dangerous that can go on to happen with bacteria vaginosis? Well, as far as infections go, bacteria vaginosis is one of the most benign infections, meaning if left untreated, it typically doesn't go on to cause any more um, adverse effects in your body or any more disease or illness. And to be honest with you, a lot of women are probably walking around with bacteria vaginosis and they are none the wiser because they feel like for them that that kind of discharge and that odor is normal and when they use soap it, they get rid of it so it's just you know i just have to take a shower and so that's not the case you don't have to live this rat race of constantly trying to chase down this fishy odor um, if you learn how to use um, proper feminine hygiene so this is the part of the video where i'm sure you guys are most interested so the question is it's like okay well if i'm not allowed to use soap to clean the sides of the vagina like i don't know if i can get on board with that sis that sounds crazy mm -mm, like uh -uh, i need to smell good so what do i do i said i got you right so the number one thing i recommend because i think that women really want to feel like they're doing something to freshen up and i get it trust me when i say i do get it so what I usually tell women is this, you can get a douche bottle, follow me, get a douche bottle, you can get them anywhere, and there's a liquid on the inside. I'm not necessarily sure what that liquid is, pour that liquid out, and you just use that bottle, and you keep that bottle in your ba bathroom, in your shower, in your tub, and when you want to feel like, if you feel like you're being sensitive to odor, especially around your cycle, um, what you can do is fill up that bottle with a little bit of warm water. You don't need to add baking soda or vinegar or anything like that, or soap. And you can just use that water to flush on the inside of the vagina. And I think that takes care of that mental kind of like, I need to do something down there. I can't just do nothing. And the good thing is you're not messing with your vaginal flora when you do that. The good bacteria can withstand just having water. You're not killing it when you're using just water. So that's one thing you can do. Another thing you can do is take a probiotic. And a probiotic is a capsule of good bacteria to help replenish bacteria in your body that's stripped away. It's always a good idea to try to replenish your body with good bacteria because that good bacteria is gonna fight for you, okay? So not all bacteria is created equal and not all bacteria is bad. We actually have a lot of good bacteria that is working for us in our body that keeps us healthy. So a probiotic is a capsule of good bacteria that you take every day for forever and you can buy them anywhere i'll go ahead and link below um, some common ones that i use but you can really just buy them anywhere so the other thing that you can try is something called boric acid it's a capsule but you use it as a suppository you put it inside the vagina if you feel like you're starting to have like the symptoms of bv one of the things that i mentioned before now you shouldn't necessarily use boric acid in place of going to your women's health provider to get a swab to see if you truly have BV because while I am naming the common symptoms of bacterial vaginosis, you can never be 100% sure that it's just bacterial vaginosis and not some other form of infection. Um, but if you're a person who are who's prone to bacterial vaginosis um, or a person who just wants to feel like they need to keep their vagina super odor free, then boric acid is something that you can try. And again, you can buy this off Amazon. I'll list the one that I have below um, and you can give it a shot. What is the treatment for bacteria vaginosis? So say you get diagnosed with BV, you go to your um, primary care provider, you go to your ob gyne or your midwife, and you do a vaginal swab and it comes back positive for bacteria vaginosis, then yes, there is a cure for it. It's not like something that's, that, that can't be cured. Um, you would take an antibiotic for a week um, and then that would get rid of the infection. But again, antibiotics, what they do is come in is, and reset. They don't come in and just get rid of bad bacteria they get rid of the good bacteria as well so they really just kind of reset the reset the vagina and you're starting over now if you take bacteria vaginosis um, antibiotics and then right after you finish you go and start using soap again then the chances of you getting bv again is really high so you have to change your patterns you have to change what you're doing in order to prevent bv from reoccurring so yes bacteria vaginosis can be treated with an antibiotic but if you keep using soap then you'll continue to have the infection 
So yeah guys, that's all I want to say about bacteria vaginosis. Hopefully if you were familiar with BV in any kind of way but you needed some more clarity on what exactly it is and how you can pre prevent it from happening in the future because to be honest with you when I break it down to patients a lot of their feedback is that oh nobody's ever explained it to me that way so I think that once you paint a picture for people it's a lot easier to understand um, and people can be more compliant with not using soap so yeah hopefully that answered any questions that you might have had around BV Hopefully that means that moving forward, you're going to tell your sisters, your friends, your daughters that using soap to clean inside the vagina is a very antiquated thing and we don't need to do that. We're smarter than that. We know better now. Um, so yeah, if you haven't subscribed to the channel already, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Like the video if you enjoyed it. It really does help my channel. It lets YouTube know that you are enjoying the content and share this video. It's always great if you share the video because that means more information about the subject is getting out to as many people as possible. So that is all I want to say for today, you guys. And until my next video, I will talk to you very soon. Bye.